Okay, the time's come for us to take a look at our current topology. We mentioned the fact that we we're going to be talking about LSAs, and specifically I said that we were going to be talking about type 1s, so a type 1 LSA, and then what we need to do is we need to have a conversation about type 2 LSAs. But right now, I want our primary focus to be on type 1 LSAs because it's important for us to recognize right out of the gate that a type 2 LSA leads to no prefix learning. Type 2 LSAs involve reachability information on broadcast segments or shared segments like Ethernet. And we are, we are going to discuss it in turn. But right now, our primary focus is going to be involving the exchange of link state advertisements that are going to be used to create our OSPF database. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of time because I personally feel like if students understand how the OSPF database works, they will be better prepared to handle any scenario that they may run into inside of the actual lab exam, whether we're talking about the troubleshooting section, diagnostics, or the configuration configuration section. Now, what we've done so far is we have taken these two devices and what we've done is we have taken these interfaces on these devices and we have created an area. We call that area, area one. And I mentioned that we do not have to have an area zero if we have just one area. I could have called it area 999 and would have been perfectly fine. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to encompass the interfaces, the two loopbacks and the physical interface between CSR1 and CSR2 in the current configuration. Now that means that inside of this area some interesting things have already taken place. So first of all, we said that we had a election where we elected a designated router which if I remember correctly was CSR1 and we elected a backup designated router, which is CSR2, if indeed my process or my, my memory is correct. Now, what that means is, is that CSR1 is actually going to create these type 2 LSAs. But what I want to do is I want to put a pin in those. We're going to come back to them after we talk about the type 1s. Because the type 1s are essential for address learning after we formed adjacencies. So we've gone through this entire process. Now, with that being said, it has to be mentioned that every router, so as I said, all OSPF speakers, or all OSPF routers, if you will, we'll just use that word, router, will generate a Type 1 LSA. Now, that Type 1 LSA will, be, they will, will generate one for every area the device is in. And as we can see right now, CSR1 is only in Area 1, so it'll only generate one Type 1 LSA. But it must be noted that that Type 1 LSA is going to contain information for more than one prefix if more than one interface is participating in OSPF. So in this instance, this Type 1 LSA coming from CSR1 is actually going to be advertised using its router ID. So what we'll see is we'll see something called the advertising router configuration. And that is actually going to translate to the router ID of the device that actually generates it. And since CSR2 and CSR1 are both inside of Area 1, it should be understood that each one of them is going to generate a Type 1 LSA. If CSR2 was in more than one area, which it can be and it will be later on in our conversation, it will actually generate a Type 1 LSA for every area that it's going to be in. Now, the other thing that we have to understand is, is Type 1 LSAs are constrained. What that means is, is that we are going to generate a Type 1 LSA inside of this area. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list in here the fact that we are going to have Type 1 LSAs. So I'll go ahead and just draw that as a square. But the important thing for us to note is, is that Type 1 LSAs are going to go everywhere in an area, but they will not cross into other areas. That's why I'm saying that they are constrained. And it also has to be mentioned that a advertising router that is generating a Type 1 LSA will always contain a count of links that it is going to be advertising. We saw that when we, start, when we took a look at the 
LSA inside of Wireshark, and we'll actually run on, run with that. So what will end up happening here is, is as an example, CSR1 has this interface and this interface participating in OSPF. That's made apparent through the use of the show IP OSPF interface brief syntax. Entering that is going to give me a listing of every device that, or every interface on a device that is going to be operating in OSPF. And we're going to explore every one of those on a case-by-case -case basis. And what that means is, is that means that every one of these interfaces is going to have a prefix assigned to them. That prefix is actually going to be advertised as part of this hop count, or not hop count, but this uh, link count. So we have to keep in mind how this works and how information gets exchanged. A type 1 LSA does not leave the area in which it has been generated. It's also important to note that type 2 LSAs are also constrained. So when we start looking at this, a type 1 LSA is only visible in one area. And it's only visible in the area where it was actually advertised. It's also noteworthy to call the attention to the fact that type 2 LSAs are only visible in an area, so only in one area. And when it comes time to extending between areas, what will end up happening is, is that information will not need to leave the infrastructure. And we're going to talk about this when we have our conversation about backup designated routers and designated routers when it comes to the operation of OSPF on multi-access connections. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to take CSR2 and we're going to connect CSR2 to CSR3 and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new area and we're going to observe the behavior that takes place because it's important to note that if I have another device, let's go ahead and draw it. So if I have another device that is connected to CSR2. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and I will draw CSR3. Now I'm going to remove this text. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give it an interface prefix which will be 23.0 slash 24. And this will be dot two, this will be dot three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new area. But the moment that I create that new area, what we'll do is we'll create area two. And we will not have an area zero. And what we're going to see here is, is that on either ends of the equation, so from CSR1, we're going to learn nothing about prefixes in CSR2, I'm sorry, on CSR3 inside of area two. And we're going to look at why that process uh, takes place. And we're going to look at why we have to have an area zero in our configurations. So I'll clean this up. When we come back, we're going to build this area and we're going to observe the actual behavior that takes place in our infrastructure as it's outlined here on the lightboard. I'll see you guys in that video.